take a look at Linux Deepin 20, the beta version that I have running here right now. What is Linux Deepin? Linux Deepin is a very unique Linux distribution. You might have heard it as the Linux distribution that Huawei pushed on their laptops and especially in China when there was this little ban going on that also included Microsoft products. This is now lifted and Huawei is now shipping their Matebooks with Windows again. But in this short period of time when they didn't have the license to ship Windows, they switched to Linux distribution and this was Linux Deepin. A Linux distribution developed in China and uh, it is a very unique Linux distribution. Because if you take a look at the spec sheet, you might see, okay, it is based upon Debian, but uh, yeah, there's nothing very special, is it? But when you boot it up for the first time, you see that this Linux distribution is meant to be shipped upon OEM machines. And here we can see the default desktop of Linux Debian, especially in the version 20. It's a beta version, so uh, bear in mind that some stuff might crash here as well or might look different on your machine, especially as I'm running it here in a virtual machine and I have the effects disabled. So we can see a panel on the bottom with very different items. One, for example, the start menu, which re resembles a Windows start menu. So we have all the applications here. We can go into categories if you want to and browse our uh, applications in categories. But we also have uh, computer, video, music, uh, document, downloads and manual shortcuts as well as the time and date, settings and power options. And we can see our avatar image here. We have a search, so if you want to search for something, let's search for the terminal, you can see we can find the terminal here. Then we have a full screen button. So this menu is now resembling a, bit, a little bit of Windows, I would say, the Windows Start menu, at least in the classic Windows XP. If you go in here, it kind of uh, reminds me of the Apple Mac OS App Dash, I think it's called. Um, the App Launcher, the full screen App Launcher. And yeah, uh, I can go here through, by the way, scrolling is not working. Ah, scrolling is working. Okay, scrolling is working here as well. It was not working before, but now it's working here. Um, so it has big icons here. I have the option to scroll through all my applications if I'd like to but it also has a category view, which is very interesting. So I have different categories here. So if I want to see graphical applications, I can see graphical applications, see office applications. I think this full screen launcher is pretty good as well and yeah, pretty organized and pretty nice. What you cannot do is like, um, I think what you cannot do is just like album and image viewer and drag it on top of each other. This doesn't work. Uh, so create your own folders or something like this. This is not possible here. You have either the, those categories here or you have this normal list view. And of course you have the search. Let's search for terminal again. You can see works at the same uh, option here. We can go back to the menu. I think I like this menu better because I'm using a desktop computer so I want to have a desktop menu. Then we have a show desktop. Uh, so if I have cluttered windows it will switch to the desktop. I have the multitasking view. And if I click on this, you can see a kind of reminder that I'm running without the Windows effect or window effects, just for the matter of um, demonstrating this here to you, because uh, otherwise mm, it might be a bit slow. So I turned the desktop effects off. Then we have uh, the Linux Deepin applications. And interestingly enough, from all those applications that we have by default here in the toolbar, only one application is not coming directly from Linux Deepin. And this is the Chromium web browser. Everything else is developed in-house by the Linux Deepin development team. So if I open up the file manager, you can see it has a nice <laughs> little animation. Uh, actually, it's a dumb animation <laughs> because every icon is doing this animation. If we go to Control Center, you can see, yeah, it's doing this <laughs> as well. Uh, but let's go to the file manager. You can see it has a nice overview. We have all our, uh, our major folders here. We have also our disks here. It also shows uh, up other uh, directories here, like for example, uh, connected uh, web servers uh, here as well. 
it has some unique features. One unique feature is uh, that uh, there's computer overview um, and yeah, it allows you to see um, yeah, an overview over your data as well as seeing, okay, we have a system disk, we have a data disk. Also one specialty of uh, Linux Deepin, it auto formats your system in a way that I would say OEM computers or OEM computer manufacturers would usually do with Windows. So, so you have a recovery partition and you have a system partition where the main system uh, resides and you have a data disk where your personal data is. So I will go in a bit, a bit deeper of the when it comes to partitioning scheme. You can also see a screenshot here of the installation process uh, and you can take a look at the um, partitioning scheme. Let's take a look what's inside of data disk. You can see our home folder is inside here, but not on, on our uh, home folder, also our opt and root and var folders are in here. So these are, these are the folders where backups are um, stored, caches are stored, and most of the applications really are stored as well, which is pretty interesting to have a different yeah, kind of partition for this. And um, Later you will find out it's an LVM that uh, used here for creating the separation. And uh, we have our system disk with the typical system files that we uh, would have. It. Also very interesting that it's using a Windows logo for the Linux kernel. Um, yeah, maybe this should change to Penguin. Uh, anyway. Uh, let's go back. The file manager itself has some categories on the left. You can go to home here and you have your usual folders and files. I created already a test folder here, for example. You can uh, go in here, folder is empty currently. I have the usual options uh, by right clicking. Um, first of all, I have the option to open it up, open up in a new window or a new tab. So it also has tab support. Uh, I have the option to middle click to close the tab. I don't have an option to middle click anywhere here to open up anything as a tab. This would be, I think, a feature request uh, to do this. Mm, I'm used to doing this in Dolphin, so I like to do it in almost every file manager like this one as well here. The Deepin file manager allows me to do several things here. A cut, copy, rename, delete, share a folder, which is pretty interesting. If I click on this, it goes into the folder properties. And one of the properties is like sharing. So I have the option to share the folder. It just creates an SMB Zumbar share so that um, either Linux, Box, Windows or Mac OS can access this folder via network. I also have the option to rename here directly in my properties uh, to give it a different tag uh, if I want to. So color and even naming tags are supported. I can also go into right click and s directly choose the color that I want. So if I want like a uh, yellow color I can do this and you can see it's not changing the color of the folder itself. It is just adding a yellow dot in front of the uh, folder. I can also remove it if I don't like it. So this is a tagging system, which, which is interesting. You can see it added the yellow tag here, but now nothing is tagged yellow. <laughs> but uh, in theory, you can do this with files and folders, which is pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, I think a useful tagging system. Then we have the option to compress. There's a built-in archive manager that will be opened then. If I click here on compress, probably nothing. Ah, it will go it will open up, it allows me to uh, set it a name and uh, have some advanced options. By default it's using the, the zip archive, but you can see we have many different uh, options in here that we can use. We have some advanced options as well. We can encrypt the archive and uh, give it a password as well if you'd like to, or split it even up. And yeah, this is the archive manager. You can see also developed in-house by uh, the Deepin Linux people. So, um, basic file manager. I don't want to tell you much more. You have the option to see here. You can see just like Dolphin, it remembers your last state of folders. So this is an icon view, this is a list view. And I have the option to just see also if I want to have some more information and a tagging system here, another panel. Uh, very easy. You can open up also the terminal. And you can see the terminal is also very unique because it's also written <laughs> for Deepin Linux. And uh, as you can see here, also pretty nice, uh, working nicely. Um, has not so many features, but I think it is enough for a terminal manager. 
so file manager, the okay, Chrome web browser. I don't have to show you. You know the deal with this one. Maybe I'll open it up just for fun to show you. If I minimize this one, you can see a little indicator underneath the minimized uh, applications that are running. Let's go to the App Store. Very unique for Debian Linux as well because it comes with its own App Store and it own, its own set of applications. And this is very interesting because they kind of mix in together all different applications that somehow run on Linux and that are very popular, of course, for the users of this Linux distribution. So most of the apps that you can see here that are ranking right now are um, apps that are targeted for Chinese users, just like, for example, WeChat, uh, QQ, uh, WPS, Office, and so on. Um, as you can see here, I cannot even read it. It's a music application, apparently. But you can see that uh, QQ has a, a wine in here, and Linux users will know, oh, this is a Windows uh, simulation. Uh, so it allows you to run Windows applications. So this QQ application is a Windows application. Yes. Let's click on WeChat, for example. I installed it here just for fun. And what you can see here is just it is not the uh, because there's no no WeChat version for 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 Linux actually. What they use is a special adaptation, a special modification of Wine that is optimized to run WeChat. So they have their own package called WeChat that is dependent on Deep in Wine, which is another application or another package that allows you to run all those different applications that are based or created for uh, Windows. And it's optimized for this. And then, yeah, it's not just downloading the Windows application itself, but it's an optimized package for running on Deep in uh, Linux, which is pretty interesting. And you can see here in the menu, if I go here and search for WeChat, you can see it is here and allows me to use WeChat. And also from the design perspective, let's minimize this, click on WeChat, it should open up in a second. There we go. Uh, from the design, it looks desktop integrated. Okay, I have to log in using the QR scanner right now. But uh, you can see that they're using, I think, the, the Windows 7-like decoration or Windows 10-like decoration for this. So they have some um, interesting design choices they did for those applications that uh, need Wine to run. And it's not the only application, like QQ is also here, and some other applications that need Wine. But you can see it's very clean and one of the most advanced uh, Linux application centers, I would say, and installation centers and software centers in general, I would say. Uh, so we have Foxit Reader here. If you go in one of those applications, you can see, uh, see what category it is, how big the size is, the developer, the website I can visit. I can see some screenshots here and I can scroll down here to see some ratings as well of the application itself and I have the button to install the application. And I can also sign in to comment and rate the application if I'd like to. Uh, if I click on here on the user or sign in, it will prompt me to log in to the Debian Cloud. It will take a second to load this little window here. So Debian Cloud uh, sync login. And uh, this one allows me to log in to Debian Cloud. Then, of course, on the left, I have the option to see various different applications, just like, for example, if I want to see uh, games, I can click on games and it will list uh, all the games that are available for Linux Deepin uh, with nice little icons here. And if I'm interested in one, I can just simply install it. Also, I have the option to see my downloads uh, that are currently progressing or my installed applications. And here you can see my uh, WeChat application. You can see here also the version number, and you can see it's a Deepin specific version that they use. So this is basically the application center. Interestingly enough, they don't offer, as far as I see, they don't offer some update option in here. So maybe it is located in the submenu. No, there's only clear cache, privacy policy, and the option to switch themes, and uh, the about, but that's all. Let's close this. And let's take a look at the Photos application because they also have a Photos application, a very simple basic Photos application that kind of reminds me of smartphone applications that uh, display photos. So I can double click here to see a photo. I have the arrow keys. You can see also it is 
a bit, I think, also meant for touch screens. Because I, for example, have a touch screen here and can use now uh, the buttons are perfectly sized for touching and uh, I cannot drag this around, sadly. Would be, I think, also a good option to do. But I can drag this on the bottom and then directly choose which image to see. Can then, if I find an image that I like and just heart the image, can, if I want to just turn it around, twist it, zoom into the image and then take a look there. By the way, keep in mind, I'm doing this with my finger right now. I'm not using my mouse. And so it's very touch screen optimized. You can go back by tapping here and uh, yeah, I can mark. This is like I want to scroll through the list, but now I'm marking stuff apparently. Not what I wanted to do. So uh, here and there, maybe it has some problems still. But what I, what I can also do is like type in here search and I can just type something in for, for searching for different images. Also I have timelines. So this is basically how you sort stuff also on the smartphone. Your timelines and you have albums. You can create albums if you want to um, by just uh, let me show you. I was albums. You can go in here and then you have this is a bit hidden. A right click menu where you can just say add to album and then you can create a new album here. Also, you have some other options like starting a slideshow, going to full screen, print this out, favorite this one, rotate, uh, set as wallpaper, or display in file manager or some basic file information as well of this file as well. So pretty nice uh, and uh, good. Why is, was I talking about the uh, optimization for touch screen? Because I think it is halfway there. Um, one thing is like the controls itself, but the other thing is like on the panel, you can see after those icons, we have some tray icons here, like uh, audio controls, network controls, uh, which will open up the normal networks. Uh, would be nice if it could be like integrated I'm not sure. Don't have a Wi-Fi here, but if it has wireless networks, if it will list wireless networks, I'm not sure. And we have some notifications here. If I click on this, you can see uh, some notifications, just like for example, two hours ago, package cache wiped in, in the App Store. You can see it's like a notification center, like we know it from, mm, I think Windows as well, but also Mac. And uh, here we have the uh, so-called onboard, which is a keyboard. Is it opening up? Yeah, we have a keyboard. We have a virtual keyboard. So this is why I think it is really, and can I can touch on it. It's a bit small, but uh, I could just search for. I can really touch on this, and it works. So pretty nice, interesting uh, ad addition to this. So I think it is also optimized, or it is partially also thought out uh, for touch screens as well. Also the big buttons here. Uh, indicates this as well. So this is the album app, the music app, also very simple and very basic. You can see music uh, sorted by albums, by artists, by all musics, by favorites that you add to your favorites. Uh, you can just play back one song. You can hard it. You can see uh, lyrics if you want to. In this case I don't have lyrics. You have the option to just shuffle through the um, playlist or through loop through it. You can see the current playlist, uh, you can set the volume and you can jump uh, to whatever you like to in the song and has a nice representation of the song as well. And uh, it's so basic that it doesn't even have the option to edit your song information only to just list them here. And as you can see here a nice song and I cannot edit anything in here. But it's a nice basic music application, uh, nothing more that you uh, would expect uh, else you have some different uh, options here to list uh, this view by title album and time added and so on and play all if you'd like to. So this is also a nice little application developed by the Linux Deepin team. And uh, of course the search is well possible. Then we have um, a calendar application. I think if you have the um, uh, synchronization cloud sync account you can also synchronize the calendar stuff. So also you can see custom made calendar also by the um, Debian team, team and you have the option to create a new event here, uh, type in something, uh, whatever you want to set a reminder or something like this and uh, has different views here for weeks, days, a month and a year. And I think if you are in the year view you can also uh, 
yeah, you can jump into the month view and you can create a new event if you'd like to. So this works pretty nice. You can also directly uh, jump to today. It doesn't have any way of uh, importing something. So I don't know what this, what, why the icons are shown there. But uh, yeah, it has. It looks to me like it is server side uh, window decoration. But we can go into this uh, maybe later. And uh, yeah, that's a calendar application. Let's go to the settings application. Also very unique, created specifically for Linux Deepin. You can see very easy uh, interface, user interface, accounts, cloud account, display, default application, panel resolution. Network sounds, date and, uh, date and time, power, mouse, uh, keyboard, updates, system information, and general settings. If we go to accounts, you can see my account here. I have the option to auto log in and log in without password, uh, or change my stuff or create a new user. Mm, cloud account, I can sign in. Display, I can change my resolution, my brightness, my display scaling, my refresh rate. Default application, you can set the default applications for web page, mail, text, and so on. And personalization, very interesting. I have the option to set the accent color here. So this case, is, uh, it's this blue here, but I can change it to green if I'd like to. And you can see the accent color changed now to green. Uh, very cool. I can enable the window effects here. And I have the option to choose a theme. Only three available, or basically two. One is automatic, which will take a look at the time and then automatically switches to the light uh, theme. And you have the dark one, which looks like this. And if I open applications, which is also interesting, all of those applications, not only the Linux Deepin applications, now are in this uh, dark theme. Let me open up Chromium, for example, also appears in this dark theme, which is uh, pretty nice. So yeah, very interesting. Let's switch to the light view because we have daylight here. And uh, of course, you have some customization options as well with the icon theme, with the cursor, cursor theme, and the font application, a uh, font um, uh, configuration. Then the network, you can choose whatever you like to here and configure your network. Wireless networks also included, but I'm using it in a virtual machine, so no wireless networks. Speaker um, configurations, uh, you can turn off the speaker, which is interesting. Uh, you have some uh, microphone uh, stuff in here, input levels, uh, advanced options, uh, output and input would appear here, and some sound effects that are enabled here. By default, you can disable them if you'd like to. Uh, date and time options, you can set uh, various different time zones and set various different time settings, like automatically syncing the time. Very nice. Mm, uh, power options, just like for example, is it required to enter your password after powering, after waking up the system? and um, configuring uh, how it will behave with plugged-in power. And if it would be a laptop here, I, will, uh, I would have the option what will happen if I'm running on a battery and also configure this. Then some mouse options, just like the scrolling speed, a double-click speed, double-click test, which I just have to show it, it's so cute. Uh, very nice little cat for double-click test. And I can choose left or right hand if I'd like to and some mouse sec settings as well. Natural scrolling I can um, enable. I'm not sure if uh, it didn't um, show any options for um, touchpads. Maybe it will appear only if you have really a touchpad and uh, in my virtual machine probably it will not detect it. Uh, the keyboard uh, settings, uh, we have some keyboard settings here and uh, the layout. Uh, what I would like to, if Linux Deepin people are listening, I want to have the English uh, language, but I also want to have the ability to set my German keyboard layout here. I cannot, sadly. It's just switching to various different English types, apparently. Uh, so I have to add a system language, and here I have various different uh, languages that I can use. And of course, I have the option to uh, configure shortcuts. And this is one of the better shortcut configuration windows that I saw, because it's very clear what to do. So they have an inbuilt screen recorder, for example, that you can start with Control Alt R, which I didn't even know. Otherwise, I would have used this probably. Then we have the update field, and now it's very interesting because let me remind you what I was talking about earlier when I showed you the file manager with a yeah a bit of school obscure um, dividing between the system 
partition and a data partition, they are creating, if you install updates, system updates especially, they will create a, a restore point or basically a bootable snapshot of your current state. So after you install the application, um, application up, not application updates, system updates, you will be prompted to reboot into a new system. So there, I think they're using LVM snapshots in the background or something like this to create snapshots that you can boot into later on. If something went wrong, you can just boot into the last known state that worked. So this is, I think, also pretty good and shows how OEM specific and centric this uh, Linux distribution is. Here you have some update notifications, auto downloads of updates and so on that you can configure and the update manager itself. Some system information you can see here, this is Linux Deeper, new, uh, 20 beta, 64 bit, running on the Linux kernel 5.3 uh, based upon Debian uh, 10 and it's running on uh, QEMU or KVM in this case, four gigabytes of uh, memory. And you have some license agreements here as well. Under general settings, uh, we have boot menu. So we can set up the boot menu. We can set up, like I said, here's the rollback to deepen uh, 20 beta from uh, Monday. So you can see it is creating snapshots for this. Pretty cool. Uh, and you can just enable, disable the uh, theming, for example, if you'd like to. So have some uh, options in here for um, configuring the boot menu, which is also pretty nice. You have a search bar, of course. You can search for stuff like, um, I don't know, search for dark. And you can see it is finding this here and giving me the option to change the theme. So also pretty nice. These are not all applications created by Linux Deepin, but most of them. And um, if you go through the menu, you can click on stuff like Archive Manager and um, a movie, for example. They have their own little movie player, video player that has basically a full screen button, uh, playlist and the play button and uh, I think some settings so I had some has, has some settings here as you can see some shortcuts that you can set some screenshots that can be saved of a movie and some subtitles that you can load in if you'd like to uh, so that's basically everything about this movie player as well and the major applications of Linux Deepin there's a text editor as well if you click on this it's also made for Linux Deepin, which is interesting. And uh, yeah, uh, has tabbing support here. You can write stuff. It is a basic text editor, I would say. And yeah, there are many, many other options here as well. There's a manual as well available. And uh, there are some applications known to Linux as well. Uh, uh, Pre-installed here, calculator, for example, I think. This is also a custom application, yes. And so they are creating their own custom applications. So now let's go into the deep dive a bit and take a look at the stuff that might be interesting for hackers. So let's go and look at the partitioning scheme again. You, can, you saw an early screenshot about this uh, of the installation manager, but here you can see how this works. And it's not using LVM as, uh, as far as you can see. It is using a more traditional kind of um, scheme of, of mounting stuff. But it's using X4 as file system. It's using extended partitions here uh, for the root. And you can see it has two root partitions. So it is using a boot partition and it's using two root partitions. Root A, which has the newest kind of so software and system installed. And it has root B, which is, uh, as far as I can under understand, it is the backup, the recovery system that you can also boot the snapshot, basically, what I was talking about. You can see that uh, here uh, on the data partition, um, we have data mounted, we have home mounted, we have different uh, things mounted here as well. And we have a recovery partition uh, as well as used as backup and a Linux swap partition. Interesting. I was under the impression it is using LVM for doing snapshots and so on, but apparently it's using some other technique uh, for for um, creating those snapshots of um, system of the system to boot into later on. So very interesting partitioning scheme, and also very interesting 
to see how this will work we can take a look at the terminal and uh, take a look maybe at the fs stub and how this looks like you can see it has um, a very clean fs stub as you can see here so it is using bind mounts to mount the home partition from data to home and uh, opt and root and var oh, it's an interesting uh, idea and interesting concept to do that i can show you uh, the kernel here is a linux deepin branded kernel so they are building their own kind of, of, of kernel i think uh, uh, sorry apricot so I never had it before it's based upon 5.3.15 and it is based upon Debian uh, stable how can I show you this uh, Debian, Debian version I think you can see 10.4 here is the version that it's based upon and what I want to show you as well is uh, maybe a bit of the archive here about the magic happening behind it you can check the archive everything is like uh, on github everything is all the tools that they develop like a screenshot tool for example that you can see here they also develop their own kind of toolkit as you saw all the applications like the photo and the music application they have like the same layout they have the same kind of uh, look and feel and uh, therefore they um, build their own uh, D D K uh, DTK uh, Debian toolkit, which is based upon uh, we can go in here. It based upon uh, Qt5, so a lot of stuff is based upon Qt5, C++ and Qt5, in this case. So you need to have Qt uh, at least version 5.6 uh, in order to build this. And uh, yeah, this is the core of. Uh, uh, deep in and they have uh, a few other uh, stuff uh, widgets here for example as well for the look and feel of various buttons and toolbars and so on in the system itself so it's very interesting to see that a company is using the Qt5 technology to build a whole new Linux desktop that most of us probably didn't hear about before and it's also interesting to see that they have this really great amount of applications and it looks like it's a very very uh, solid and, and uh, fresh and um, very consistent operating system with all its design and you don't notice that you're using GTK applications I can show you this in the file in the, in the, in the web browser itself if I go to uh, file open or file save dialog um, just hit, hit control and s for the file safe dialog you can see it is using their own opening dialog which looks unique it's not the gnome file dialog it is not the uh, K, uh, kde file dialog or plasma file or pi plasma file dialog it is their own file dialog in chromium here so it is integrated in a way uh, the only thing that i find a bit weird is they by default don't ship they ship with a document viewer which uh, if I'm not completely mistaken is also their own kind of document viewer that they developed here but they don't ship with an office uh, they have even a drawing application here deep in draw they can uh, draw some stuff if you like to also custom developed which is I think also pretty nice um, but I didn't see any office uh, application itself you can see there's a text editor but text editor doesn't mean that you can this is a normal text editor. it's not like uh, you have the option to uh, change the uh, format of this so they don't ship with their own office uh, suite uh, I think what you can install is like LibreOffice and you can install also WPS Office if you'd like to so I think this is what they expect you to do 
Anyway, they are using the file manager, for example, it's using um, the, you might have seen this, it has some like quirks, it looks a bit like maybe the, 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 the Nautilus or a bit like the Dolphin file manager, but it's their own file manager. It's based upon Qt5 technology, but they're using GIO, the GNOME uh, input output system or the GVFS, the GNOME um, virtual file system for mounting uh, network drives, for example. Uh, let me just mount a network drive, connect to server, SFTP, here we have our server, and I click connect and I just have to uh, type in some password and then I can connect to my host machine for example. So it is using uh, GVFS, um, we can just go into the system monitor, also by the way very nice system monitor they did here. It is uh, like categorized in applications, in my processes. So if you re really want to take a look at the processes uh, and uh, in all processes. And you can see here, nicely done, the list of running application processes or, uh, and the memory allocation, the CPU allocation, download speeds and read and writes of disks. Pretty nicely done. And I hope that other Linux is, uh, other uh, um, Linux desktops will also take a look at this and uh, try to mimic it. Then we have services here as well, which lists all the services that are currently running um, and started. I think it's using systemd for this, which is, I think, also pretty interesting to see. And um, yeah, uh, also interesting. Let's keep this open uh, for showing you. Ah, for showing you, it's using. You can search here. GVFS, you can see it's using GVFS for uh, mounting network drives. And what you can also see here are other things, just like for example the window manager they are using is Quinn. So they're using the KDE Plasma window manager uh, uh, as window manager for <laughs> their system, which is also pretty interesting. I think they cloned it, because if you can, if you look here on the website and search for Quinn, uh, let's go in here, search for Quinn. You can see they have a DDE Quinn, so they have a fork of Quinn here. Uh, and also there's Deepin Quinn, fork of Quinn. And this is on the configuration files, but here Deepin Quinn, which is a fork of Quinn. I'm not sure if they're still really using it, uh, or at least they have a repository here. So it is a very interesting uh, Linux distribution, as I would say. They put a lot of effort and a lot of work in here and almost no one <laughs> noticed it. And probably this might be a very good alternative. I would really like to see this on uh, Huawei devices or on other devices on OEM machines, because I could really imagine that this is could be like this um, uh, big alternative to uh, Chrome OS uh, which is, I think, the, one of the biggest also supported uh, Linux desktops in, in quotes, air quotes. So I would really like to see something like this succeeding over Chrome OS, I really have to say. Uh, though I'm a bit skeptical about the cloud stuff, I uh, would not really use this. And I would really like to see that Linux deep in people would maybe offer different cloud providers like I can use my next cloud and it will automatically sync with their calendar and uh, I have an option in their file manager to go to my next cloud. This would be, if they nail the next cloud integration, this would be, I think, very, very preferable, uh, I would say. So what can we see here else? Uh, we can see they have their own clipboard. They have their own uh, OSD. They have their dock on the bottom and they have some tools like FCTX, which is like for, if you want to type in Chinese or Japanese um, characters, you need this. And uh, they're using Pulse Audio, Systemd, so all the normal stuff. They have the GNOME keyring daemon running, which is also pretty interesting. Could be, uh, have something to do with the GVSS, that this is like uh, interconnected somehow. Uh, they have K-Global shortcuts running here as well. K-Global SL, K-Global SL. Um, it's a mixture. It's like, I'm fascinated by this operating system, I have to say, by this Linux distribution. 
and uh, yeah I really like to see more of uh, this uh, applications and this desktop I'm not sure if this desktop is available for other Linux distributions um, if they even can integrate it, uh, it's I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, customization. Let's. Uh, what what I want to show you lastly is like the uh, desktop effects. If I go to display, I think no, it was personalization. I can enable the desktop effects. And you can see we have transparency in the panel, and we should have yeah. We have also rounded corners for the windows. For all of those windows, like uh, when I go to music, you can see also very rounded corners here for the music application shadow effects. And it's a bit slower. This is why I don't didn't like to show it to you earlier. But you can see also the 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 prompts look a bit nicer. And uh, you have transparency in the menu. Also in the big menu, I think there was always transparency, but this is here. And uh, the categories look a bit nicer. You can see the icons are a bit more readable here. What you can also do is, if you don't like this modern style of panel, is right click on this here, go to mode, and then you choose efficient mode, which will go into this kind of yeah, minimalized look and feel which kind of reminds me more of Windows, <laughs> I would say. And uh, you still have this icon tasks, um, icon task manager to open up stuff. But it's a very nice operating system, very nice Linux uh, distribution. Um, missing some parts here and there, but I can see the potential of creating a very polished uh, desktop experience for users. And I would really, even with the, uh, also the working, nice working um, uh, return to the last known good configuration that you... It, it's... wow! Uh, I would really see this could be installed already on some uh, computers for people that don't mess around a lot with computers. They don't like to mess around with computers. This is, I think, a pretty nice uh, addition and works and looks and feels very, very solid. I hope you enjoyed this very lengthy review and look of uh, deep in Linux in its uh, version 20 beta. What could have been if Microsoft did not have the allowance to ship, to ship their Windows to Huawei? This could be the Linux distribution we could, could have been end up with, maybe with some Huawei tools as well integrated. Too bad this didn't happen. If you like this video, share, like and subscribe for more content on my channel. That's everything for this video. Until the next time, bye.